Hey there everybody, I am back. It took me a little bit longer than I expected, but I do have a video for you guys. And we are going to be taking a request today. So I got a request from Socrates Highborn, who asked, uh, first of all, he said, glad you're back. And he said, uh, hope to see some videos on ray casting attack damage or AI following and attacking the player. Well, I can do one of those two today. We're going to take a look at ray casting attack damage and the AI thing we'll have to get back to another time. But let's just jump into the game and take a look at what we got here. I've just got a super simple uh, raycast example going on here. So this is our heroine right here. Her name is Player. And then I've got an enemy right over here. His name is Enemy. So uh, what I want to do is first demo what we've got going on for you guys, and then I'll show you how it works. So I'm going to go ahead and press play. And you can see I've got health counts for both the player and the enemy on the screen. And uh, if I press fire 2 here, I can shoot. And you can see if I shoot at the enemy, his health goes down. If I shoot in a different direction, no health decrease. Only if I'm pointing at the enemy does his health decrease. I also have a script that lets me walk up and melee him, but uh, that's not all that exciting, so we'll stick with the ray casting stuff for now. So one more time, I'll just blast him just like that. So how does that work? Well, I'll show you. Uh, let's take a look. So first of all, here's my player. This is where most of the important stuff is going on. Um, She's got an animator component with a locomotion controller on it. I just got this from a locomotion package I got on the Asset Store. There was very little setup, um, but if you want to learn how this stuff works, you should watch the Unity Mechanim tutorial. Uh, it's about 40 minutes long, but it's super, super useful. It'll teach you all about how Mechanim works, uh, and I'll provide a link to that in the show notes uh, if I remember to do that. Uh, okay, so then we've also got all the standard stuff. She's got a transform. She's got her character controller. And then we've got the locomotion player script, which comes in that package, and that's needed to make her animate. Um, but the two scripts on here that I wrote are player health and shoot fireball. So here's player health. Uh, all that is is just a variable for health set to 100. So that just starts her health at 100, and it doesn't do anything by itself, but other scripts reference it. And then we've got shoot fireball, which is much more interesting. So here's shoot fireball.js. And let's take a look at what's going on in here. So it's got two uh, global variables, one called fireball prefab. That represents the, uh, the, the prefab of the fireball shooting out of her. And then the other is spawn location. So that is a look. It's just an empty object that I'm using to spawn the fireball in the right place. So every update, here's what we're going to do. First thing we're going to do is create a vector that represents the direction forward for this character. Um, because I'm going to use that a couple of times. So you can see right here I use the spawn location um, uh, transform. Spawn location is an object that's placed like right about chest level with her so that I can spawn my fireballs from that location. So we're getting the vector 3, the forward direction from that. Then we're going to draw a debug ray. So I'll show you if I jump into the scene view while the game is running. There's my debug ray. So if I move her around you'll see that the debug ray represents the forward direction. So that line of code I just showed you only draws the ray. It doesn't do anything else. Uh, oops, there we go. So uh, then we've got the next part where we shoot the fireball. So if the fire two button is pressed, and you could do this with any key, but I just use the fire two button, then uh, I create a variable called spell where I instantiate the fireball prefab in the location of spawn location. So Fireball prefab is from a package of elemental spell effects that I got on the asset store again for free. They look awesome. And the fireball one is especially cool. So uh, I instantiate that in the location of spawn location and I store it as spell so that I can refer to it later. Then I do the ray cast, and this is the interesting thing. So for those of you who don't know, a ray cast is basically checking to see in a direction whether there's something there. Um, so you can imagine it like a ray, like the debug ray that you saw on the screen, shooting out into a location, and if it finds something, it returns true. If it doesn't find something, it returns false. So the way you would use a raycast, you would say uh, if physics.raycast, and then you put in the parameters, and it comes back either true or false, and if it's true, then you do something. So uh, what I did here is I used three parameters. The first is the position that it starts from, spawn location position. Second is the direction it should go in, forward, which I made earlier. And then the third parameter is hit, which I declared right up here, var hit of type raycast hit. So you don't have to do this, but when you use a raycast, you can have it return a hit object with information about what it hit. So that's what I did here. So hit represents the object that I hit, and I'm going to use that in a second. So if that raycast hits something, it returns true, which means all of the instructions in this if statement happen. So the first one we've got here is 
using that hit object. So what we're doing is finding out which object was hit. So the way you can do that is by getting access to the collider component uh, or the collider property of hit. So uh, when hit hits something, it stores a reference to the collider that it hit. And then from there, I can find out which object that game, that collider is attached to with dot game object. So hit dot collider dot game object will give me the object that my raycast hit. So I save that as enemy. Uh, and then I want to get the enemy's health from the enemy. So I made a variable called eh, and I got the enemy health component from enemy. That's that script I wrote earlier called enemy health. Um, and then now I have eh representing enemy health, so I can make changes to enemy health. So I just said eh.health, subtract 10. So now every time that raycast hits the uh, dude, his health goes down by 10. Now, that wouldn't be all that useful if I didn't change the value on the screen, so I also have to do that. Um, so I made a variable called eh display, and eh display represents the enemy health display object right here, which is just a GUI text object. Uh, there we go. So eh display represents that GUI text object, and then uh, I made another variable called eh text, which gets the GUI text component from that object, and that's what I actually want to manipulate. So eh text dot text will adjust the text property, which is right up there, and change what it says. So uh, what we're changing it to is enemy health colon space, and then whatever their health is. So that's how the damage thing works. You fire a raycast in a direction. If the raycast returns true, you find out which object it hit, and then you access properties of components attached to that object. So this object was named enemy, it has an enemy health component on it, so I got that component, and then I was able to adjust that component's properties. And that's most of what's going on here. Let's take a look at player, see if there's anything interesting going on there. Oh, we just did that. Do I have anything on enemy? Okay, so on enemy, I also have an enemy health script. Again, just saving health at 100. And then on the player, I have player health. Health is 100, right? All that script is only there to hold a value. And then uh, I have this take damage script, and this is just for melee, which honestly I didn't even show you. But uh, basically, it has this on trigger stay function. So this guy's got a trigger attached to him, and if an enemy enters the tr or if something enters the trigger, and fire one is pressed, then he takes damage. Enemy health dot health subtract ten, and then you change the value on the screen, just like you did in the other uh, script. And that's it. So here's what it looks like. You saw it already, but I'll show you again. I can run around in here. You can see I've got that debug ray to show me which direction I'm pointing. So if I'm not pointing near him, the raycast never hits him, which means that he never takes any damage. Oh, I can't see the, uh, the health. How do I see it? Make the screen a little bit bigger. Make this a little bit bigger. There it is. Um, but when I rock up, and I'm actually 100% sure I'm pointing at him because I used that debug ray to, to make sure. Oh, it's hard to aim, actually. Then I can use the raycast, and the raycast hits him, and his health decreases by 10, as I specified. Uh, and actually, I didn't put in any fail-safes here, so you notice I can go below 10. So you can, it's up to you to figure out how you can prevent that. So that's how it works. Um, I'm going to include some links and potentially even the code that I used here in the show notes, and hopefully this is helpful for you guys. So go ahead and subscribe if this was useful for you. I'm going to put out more videos like this as often as I can manage. And uh, we hope to see you guys next time. So if there's anything you'd like to see, just go ahead and leave it in the comments. And we will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.